Canadians, Americans, members of the Commonwealth, and patriots the world over. Welcome to the show that tells you what they won't. Exposing the fake news, conspiracies, and corruption with institutions that govern our lives, and red-pilling the nations one fact at a time. It's Weathering the Storm with your host, Canada's Red Pill, Billy Joyce. Good day, folks, and welcome to another show. Uh, As you know, the big story in the news these days has been the caravan that is heading up from South America to the U.S. border. And if you were to listen to the mainstream media, um, you you would absolutely believe that the people that are uh, the people that are coming up uh, from South America are downtrodden, are are majority, you know, there's an equal amount of men, women, and children. If you were to listen to the media, these people are suffering. We're talking thousands and thousands of people coming up uh, to the United States just before the midterm elections. Go figure the timing behind that. Now, what I'd like to do with you is uh, share uh, some Facebook posts that I've found uh, that make some very compelling arguments as to why this is not just a random caravan that's been organized. I'd also like to share some news articles that I've come across explaining uh, what's going on uh, with this caravan and also some uh, tweets. So we're going to start off uh, with... uh, with this uh, Facebook post that I found uh, by Afshin Amrani. It says, many of us who escaped Iran or whose families escaped religious persecution through rough, dangerous mountains are wondering how this massive group is organized. 7,000 people are traveling 2,000 miles from Honduras to Arizona. 7,000 people, 2,000 miles. That's 20 plus miles a day for three months straight, nonstop. Why now, midterm elections? Why didn't this happen under Obama? Who feeds them? Who dresses them? Who bathes them? Where do they get their water? Where do they pee and poo? And how? Where? Is it wrong to ask such obvious questions? Anyone who has tried to organize a trip for 10 people with all the luxuries of today has to wonder how 7,000 people organize this way. And then when you look at an actual picture of the caravan itself, I mean, you can see some women in there, I guess. Like, I can pick one out right there. I see some children on the shoulders of their fathers. But when I look at the front row here, when I look at all the people, all the people, it's actually hard to pick out women and kids. Because it seems like the majority are men between the ages of, I don't know, anywhere from teenagers to 40s 50s and that's just this picture here that i'm looking at and this post is by someone who escaped iran for reasons of religious persecution these people are fleeing and it seems like they're being it seems like they're being helped out because how do you walk the equivalent of a marathon every day for months without proper nutrition I've played sports, okay, and and I've done my fair share of walking. You can't walk 20 plus miles a day without square meals. It's, It's physically impossible. You would die of exhaustion or dehydration or both or starvation or something. So to say that this is just a random group of 7,000 people that are walking 2,500 miles to get to the U.S. border and for people to believe that, in my opinion, you have to be crazy to believe it. Now, I found um, Adrian Peyton Green. I found an interesting post by Adrian. She runs uh, Peyton's Park Bench. Uh, and this is a post that she put up that I found very interesting. And the reason I found it very interesting is because supposedly uh, there was a picture taken of members of this caravan holding bags that had U.S. aid written on it. Now, U.S. aid um, aid, uh, was an establishment of uh, JFK, John F. Kennedy, passed U.S. aid by executive order, and it sought to unite several existing, existing foreign assistance organizations and programs under one agency. Now, although it was created by John F. Kennedy, 
it's an independent agency of the United States federal government. And they, they're primarily responsible for administering civilian foreign aid and development assistance. With a budget over, of over $27 billion, USAID is one of the largest official aid agencies in the world and accounts for more than half of all U.S. foreign assistance, the highest in the world in absolute dollar numbers. Then Adrian posts on the Council on Foreign Relations, and you can feel free to go back and read through this as well. Its membership, which numbers 4,900, has included senior politicians, more than a dozen secretaries of state, CIA directors, bankers, lawyers, professors, and senior media figures. That should set off alarm bells because we know that President Trump right now is dealing with what we call the deep state swamp. And the deep state swamp is made up of all these people. So you've got this arm's length independent firm called USAID, do they want us to believe that these people in this caravan marching up from South America got their hands on these handy little bags that say USAID on them on their own? Or were they, were they given these bags? And at what point were they given these bags with USAID on them? Because I doubt very much President Trump approved sending bags to help this caravan that's trying to uh, invade America. Uh, there's the Open Society Foundation. Now, the Open Societies Foundation is an international grant-making network founded by business magnate George Soros. Now, George Soros himself, in the Wall Street Journal, in 2016, um, he wrote an op-ed where he says, we will seek invest in investments in a variety of sectors, among them emerging digital technology. Uh, let me see. Sorry. I have decided to earmark $500 million for investments that specifically address the needs of migrants, refugees, and host communities. I will invest in startups, established companies, social impact initiatives, and business founded by migrants and refugees themselves. Although my main concern is to help migrants and refugees arriving in Europe, I will be looking for good investment ideas that will benefit migrants all over the world. And this commitment of investment equity will complement the philanthro phila phila philanthropic, I'm French, forgive me, contributions my foundations have made to address forced migration, a problem we have been working on globally for decades and to which we have dedicated significant financial resources. So you, you've got the Open Societies Foundation, which is a creation of George Soros. You've got George Soros himself admitting in 2016 that he wanted to help migrants. And uh, you've, you've got that group there. Uh, you've got that group there, OSF. I'm trying to find, trying to find more information here on OSF, the Open Societies Foundation. Um, they have expenditures in excess of $11 billion, mostly in grants. And they've helped with the Open Society Initiative for West Africa, the Open Society Initiative for Southern Africa, and its headquarters are in New York City. Now, if that wasn't enough, um, when these migrants broke through a gate, I believe it was to get into Mexico, uh, there were people that were photographed wearing t-shirts saying the future is something. Well, then you can go and find out that Hillary Clinton wrote a book called The Future is Female. Oh, and that's what the shirt says. The Future is Female. I wonder now, The Future is Feminism, The Future is Female. I don't care what that shirt says. If they're fleeing their native countries of Honduras and other countries, do you think they really had the time to go buy a t-shirt with the title of Hillary Clinton's book on it? Or is it more possible that these came with the same care packages that included the bags with U.S. aid written on them? Again, I could be completely mistaken, but these pictures didn't just surface from nowhere. So you got Hillary Clinton, The Future is Female, uh, title of her book, written on t-shirts, USAID written on bags. 
you've got the absolute common sense that there's no way 7,000 people are going to walk for months at a time, 20 some miles a day, without proper food, without proper water, without proper rest, without proper uh, sanitation uh, services, without bathrooms. Uh, those are all legitimate questions that it seems nobody in our mainstream media is even asking. All they do is show the, 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 the outrage and the sadness and the trouble and, oh my goodness, it's the end of the world because President Trump is going to send, is going to send the military down to the southern border to confront the, these invaders is, is what they are. Now, the Gateway Pundit put out an article yesterday, and the, t the article, the title of the article was Army Invasion, Honduran Caravan Includes Military-Aged Male Migrants from Bangladesh, Haiti, and Congo. And when you look at this picture, it's all men. And one of them is wearing a Tommy Hilfiger shirt, someone else is wearing an Under Armour cap, um, another guy's got a big, thick chain around his neck. Some of them look like they're clean shaven. Like, do they get access to bathrooms and, and shaving blades and shaving cream and aftershave too? Like, uh, who's providing them with all this? Who's providing them with this stuff? And I'm not going to go through all these articles. You can go through them yourself. But I'm just showing you that there are media outlets. The Gateway Pundit has broken many, many, many stories. Uh, True Pundit is also reporting that Bangladeshis have joined the migrant caravan in Guatemala, Univision correspondent reports. And again, look inside, look, in, look, look at this picture, and you're hard-pressed, you're hard-pressed to find women and children in there. You're hard-pressed to find it. They're not there. Now, Sarah A. Carter who's a very respected journalist, she said that she met with the Guatemalan Minister of Defense, Luis Miguel Ralda Moreno, and based on interviews she's conducted so far, along with Judicial Watch, and, Judicial Watch investigations, the United States needs to investigate the funding that was used by NGOs as well as other groups to organize the caravan. And there's a picture of her standing there with the Guatemalan Minister of Defense, Luis Miguel Ralda Moreno. And for, for all the left-wing, politically correct, social justice warriors out there uh, who, who are all condemning President Trump for his stance on this caravan and his stance on illegal immigration in the first place, I would like to remind you, uh, and David Bozel, uh, thank you to David Bozel on Twitter uh, for posting this video, um, but... Um, Donald Trump Jr. I think Donald Trump Jr. also exposed it. Let, let's listen to the one Donald Trump Jr. put up. I, I like John, I like Donald Trump Jr. Let's listen to what Barack Obama said at one time about people coming into America illegally. Let's take a listen. If I can ever get the volume to work. We are a generous and welcoming people here in the United States, but those who enter the country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law, uh, and they are showing disregard for those who are following the law. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked, and circumventing the line of people who are waiting patiently, diligently, and lawfully uh, to become immigrants in this country. So when Trump says this, he's a racist bigot. But when Barack Obama says this, it's when they go low, we go high. When Barack Obama said this, no one had a problem with it. Hillary Clinton said it. Bill Clinton said it. Every president has said the same things. But because it's President Trump and because there's an election coming, they're going to put it, the poor, those poor migrants in the caravan. And I'd feel bad. I, I would. I would really feel bad if I knew that all the migrants were genuine asylum seekers. But when I see that, just looking at it, it looks like over 75% of the people coming up are, are fighting aged men. The fact there, there, and I could have found more videos. You go, you can go look for videos where you can see these people being transported on 18 wheelers. There are reports out there saying that 
they're only walking for photo opportunities by by the mainstream media and then they're all put into trucks and buses and 18 wheelers and being driven up and really that's the only way it makes sense in order for them to be here before the midterm elections you're talking 20 plus miles a day and they're supposedly sleeping outside or they're sleeping wherever it is that so they're not getting the proper rest they're not getting the proper nutrition they're not getting the proper hydration I'm sure their feet must be absolutely blistered. Where are they stopping to treat all these blisters? I mean, I've, 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 I've gone on business meetings where it included a lot of walking outside, let's say over three or four days. And if I didn't have really, really solid footwear, I'd have blisters everywhere. I remember one time walking with new sandals, for example, I had blisters after walking for a couple of hours. Never mind walking for months at a time, 20 miles a day. But yet they want us to believe that these people are just random asylum seekers. And if you listen to the mainstream media, they're painting uh, President Donald Trump as some evil monster for wanting to send the military down to the southern border. Well, he's going to send them down. And the fact that Mexico and, and Honduras and other countries between where they left and the United States didn't do anything, we may very well see the uh, United States-Mexico-Canada agreement become the United States-Canada agreement. M Mexico may have shot themselves in the foot by not being more stern with these people coming up coming up from South, South, South America or, or, or Central America. But there's no one is going to make me believe that this is just some random caravan. I, I, I'm sorry, no one's going to make me believe that. The, the timing of it is too coincidental. The logistics of it makes absolutely no sense. Uh, there's no way these people are being treated for all their injuries and blisters and, and lack of sleep and malnutrition and... It's either that or they're getting the help of all these countries and all these villages as they go through. And then that means that those countries are complicit with allowing a caravan of illegal immigrants to invade America. Because let's face it, if they're breaking down fences to get to America, if they're literally breaking down fences to get to America... They're not just coming here for to, to seek asylum and they're flying their flags. They're flying the Honduras flag while they're in this caravan. I'll tell you what, if I was fleeing Canada because I felt like my life was in danger, I was being persecuted and I wanted to go to the United States for a better life. And I was walking there because no one in my government seems fit to take care of me. Like hell, I'd be flying a Canadian flag to go down to the U.S., because I was fleeing Canada, I'd be carrying an American flag. I mean, if you want to go to a country to get out of the asshole that you're in, why would you be walking around carrying the flag of the asshole you want to leave rather than the flag of the country that's going to give you the freedom that you so, that you so desire? Everything about this defies logic, but I forgot. Logic is not exactly dished out freely these days. I'm done now. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to take a look at other videos you find on this page. Don't forget, if you like it, push the subscribe button under this video and feel free to like and share with all your friends. Follow me on Twitter by following the link on this page. If you want to interact, feel free to post a comment, but please, no obscenities. Thanks for watching, Billy Joyce signing off and reminding you that I'm here to help you weather the storm.